It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's a happy sun. It's a happy sun. The birds are singing. The birds are singing. The ducks are quacking. The ducks are quacking. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. trick here. I have four rings. One, two, three, four. That's my magic trick. Hi kids. Hey, what do you like to eat for lunch? I love peanut butter sandwiches, man, and I wrote a song about it. Here you go. Have a peanut butter sandwich. 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 Do you like white bread? How about wheat bread? How about rye bread? Have a peanut butter sandwich. Have some Kool-Aid. Have some milk. Have a peanut butter sandwich. Put some jelly on it. How about jam? Do you call it preserves? How about orange marmalade on your peanut butter sandwich? Help is like his with bananas. Have a peanut butter sandwich. Have a peanut butter sandwich. books here and a newspaper and I went outside and picked some flowers and 
so I'm going to make the stems on some of these shorter. And then we're going to make a, uh, we're going to press these in between the newspaper and a book. So I'm going to put these on the newspaper here. I found purple and kind of a pinkish colored clover and some white flowers with uh, yellow middles and I'm going to press them between the books here. And then I'm going to put weight on it and then we will come back. Hi, we're going to do a craft corner. So I got glue, scissors, piece of pink construction paper, a frame I got from Goodwill, and some dried plants that's going to go in the frame. So I'm going to take the, open up the frame here. Okay, so we're going to cut out a piece of paper, the right size. Now we're going to put the plants, smallest ones first, in here. Might need to trim it down a little bit. Okay, so I have my picture. I'm going to put it in the frame. But there it is, Craft Corner. Beautiful dried uh, flowers that I got from the yard. And it takes about four to six weeks to dry them in a book with newspapers. And there we go. We have a beautiful picture of dried flowers. Okay, that's Craft Corner. Bye. Hi, we're going to talk about a story called The Song of Roland. They were from France. Charlemagne was a mighty king from France. And he had been in war with Spain for seven long years. And he had conquered a lot of land up to the sea. One day, the pagan king of Spain asked his dukes and counts at the court of Saratoga. He said, Charlemagne will soon destroy us. I have no army to match his. Give me some advice on how to avoid more shame and death. The wisest knight stepped forward. Offer Charlemagne an olive branch is a symbol of our service and friendship. I give him hundreds of thousands of gifts. 
And then he said, well, what if Charlemagne doesn't believe in our goodwill as the king of Spain? We will send our own sons as hostages, even if it means their death. Better they should lose their heads than we should lose all the beautiful land of Spain. So the king decided to follow this counsel. So he sent ten horsemen to meet with Charlemagne. They found Charlemagne in a garden with his warriors. The warriors were having fun, playing and sword fighting. So they went up to this old guy in a white beard who had a very stern look on his face. And they approached him and they offered him gifts and an olive branch. So the king said, well, let me talk to my men. So he took his men aside and he asked um, them if he should accept this gift. And the men were like, no, you shouldn't accept this gift at all. Rollin says no. And if you do, you will regret it. Because the last time they offered us an olive branch, they cut all our heads off. So I don't want to... Uh, take this olive branch at all. And his stepfather Gainlon said, no, you have to listen to the men from Spain and accept their gifts. Otherwise, we will regret it. So the king says, no, I agree with Roland. So I so they have Ganeon go to greet the king, the pagan king, um, and find out why he wants to send these gifts, what kind of treachery is he up to, and um, Galeon is really angry at Roland and and this is a very dangerous mission and Galeon lacked true courage and strength so he couldn't he didn't want to do it he didn't want to go visit the pagan king of Spain um, but he ended up going and as soon as he got there he decided he was going to get revenge on Roland his stepson and so he got there and he told the uh, pagan king give all your gifts to Charlemagne let them start for France when the enemy gets to the mountains order your men to attack I'll make certain that Count Rowland is the captain of the rear guard so he can quickly be slain his death will break the spirit of Charlemagne for he is the king's right arm the Franks will fight you no more, and you can live in peace. The enemy thanked Gandalon for his act of treason and gave him many gifts. When the traitor returned to Charlemagne and urged him to trust the pagans, the king of Spain will become your vessel, he promised. Charlemagne praised Galeon's success, then ordered the Franks to break camp and start at once for home, as he had promised the pagans. Galeon had Rollin appointed captain of the rear guard. So they set off and Rollin and Count Oliver had 20,000 soldiers and they were headed towards the Valley of Thorns in the Pyrenean Mountains. Suddenly they heard a distant sound of trumpets. When they looked behind themselves, they saw the red, blue, and white banners floating above a sea of glittering helmets and shields. 4,000 pagan soldiers were marching after them, and a 1,000 were blowing trumpets. We're going to be attacked, cried Oliver. Blow your horn so Charlemagne can hear and come back. I will not blow my horn and endanger the king's entire army. We must fight them ourselves. So he called to his men, prepare to fight, dismount and pray, and strike a blow for God. 
As Rowan rode his swift horse down the ranks of the 20,000 men, the white pennants of the last stream streamed behind him and the battle cry, Mount Joy, rang through the air. Then the pagans attacked. Rollin became fiercer than a lion. He spurned his horse and broke into battle. He struck 15 mighty blows with his lance until it was in charge. Then he drew his sword and wreaked havoc against the enemy. Though the pagans threw spears, lances, and feathered javelins at him, he kept fighting. So, the French killed thousands of the pagans, but then the tide turned and the pagans killed almost all the French. And then a terrible, a terrible storm hit, and it was said that nature was grieving for Count Rowland. His friends lay dying on the battlefield. He decided to finally blow his horn and he blew so hard his temple temples burst blood streamed from his ears and mouth but still he kept blowing his horn Charlemagne heard the battle horn and came running he saw or er, Rollin put down his horn and returned to battle with a vengeance though he was wounded the enemy took flight from him like deer running from a pack of hounds. Um, Rollin picked up the horn and blew again, but this time the sound grew faint. In the far distance, Charlemagne was seized by terrible grief, for he knew his beloved nephew was dying. Uh, Rollin was not like any kind of mortal man. He was very strong. He remained on his feet and wandered the battlefield searching for his dead friends. He carried them over to the Archbishop to be blessed. And then his, uh, his dear friend Oliver, he took him over to the Archbishop and laid him in front of him. And finally, the color drained from him. Rollins face and he raised his right glove to the heavens and in a dream he saw Saint Gabriel take it from him then he dropped down and died Charlemagne looked all over the battlefield for his nephew and he couldn't find him Rollin Oliver where are you but only the screams of circling vultures answered his cries. When he finally discovered the uh, his nephew, he prayed to God to extend the sunlight far into the night so his army could stop the pagans once and for all. The sunlight remained to the battle's end as the Franks defeated the enemy. Afterwards, warriors and horses slept throughout the grassy meadows. And only Charlemagne stayed awake beneath the full moon, still dressed in a shining armor. The king sat and rested for the first time all day. Dear Rollin, my friend, he whispered, when I return to France, all who love you will ask of you, and I will tell them that you stood and fought bravely to the end until God sent his angels to carry your soul to paradise. Then Charlemagne bowed his head and wept. That is the story of Song of Rollin. Hi, kids. How you doing? I hope you like cookies, because I wrote a song about cookies. And if you want, you can sing with me. Cook, 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 cook. You know, peanut butter are the best, but you might like one of the rest. Black chocolate chip, or almond, or so many others that are fun. Okay, now, I want you to yell out while you're watching this TV show, your favorite cookie. Go ahead, yell real loud. Okay, now sing with me the chorus. Cook, 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 cook. Cook, 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 cook,
years the rainbow was a real big cookie cause then I'd eat it up hi welcome to science corner we're going to talk about tree leaves and why they turn colors like orange red yellow for autumn did you know that the green color is not the real color of leaves no that is the color of chlorophyll their real color is red or orange or yellow we only get to see these colors in the fall in the trees roots is a sugar food that goes into the leaves and combined with the sunlight it creates chlorophyll the green color when the days get shorter the sugar food slows way down and the tree will go to sleep or dormant for the winter and that is when the leaves change color so and I'll ask you this so why are pine needles green all year round and that's because they have smaller leaves and they don't require as much sugar food as a tree with large leaves so that's the science corner thanks bye hi fox and wolf were walking in the woods where it was snowy and Wolf says to Fox, I wish we could find something to eat because I am so hungry. And then the fox says, yeah, me too. So they try to figure out what to do about their hunger. Now the fox is a lot smarter than the wolf. Okay. The fox sees a Native American walking with snowshoes on his feet and pulling a sled and in the sled he sees these fish here and he goes oh yummy I want to have some fish so he goes over here and he goes oh oh my leg my leg hurts oh brother can you help me my leg hurts so he says, oh, well, you will make a very good hat. So I'll put you in my basket. And I'll take you home and make a hat out of you. But he runs off with one of the fish strings, the string of fish. He runs off with it. The wolf sees the fox with the string of fish and says oh my gosh that looks so good I'm so hungry how can I get fish like that so the fox tells him what to do so the wolf goes up to the Indian Native American and says oh my leg my leg brother can you help me my leg hurts oh and uh, he says fool me once but you can't fool me twice so he tries to wrap up the wolf's legs with a rope and while he's busy doing that Fox comes along and takes his other fish and runs off with it. Okay, so that's the story, the Blackhawk story of the wolf and the fox and the Native American. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Hi, we're going to do Library Corner. We have the kids and clay ceramic book right here. 
hand building and wheel throwing projects from the Kids in Clay Pottery Studio, created by Kevin Nerman, written by Elaine Arama, and illustrated by Curtis H. Arama. And this is a really good book from the library. Um, talks about how you can make different kinds of pottery and bowls and pinch pots, how you can make mugs and breakfast bowl and candle holder and candy dish and all sorts of stuff. And then it also tells you how you can work with the the pottery wheel. Make a soup bowl, a swinging bell, like that. Little girl is making a big bowl. How you can make an animal up on legs by putting a pillow underneath it. And then you put the legs on it and then you bake it in the oven and or in the kiln and then it uh, you have to make sure you take out the pillow though when you when you cook it all sorts of different stuff you can make with clay and ceramics my next book is the art book for children. And it's about how you can make art. And it talks about different artists that made art and it asks you questions over here about what do you think about it so that you think about the art uh, different pieces of art talks to you about it yeah get this book the art book for children okay Get that at the library. Alright, thanks. That's the art corner. Or the book corner. Or the library corner. Yeah, the library corner. Okay, thanks. Bye. Hi. I'm going to do some Aesop's advice. There was a man that had two daughters. One daughter was married to a gardener and the other daughter was married to a tile maker. So he went up to the first daughter who was married to the gardener and he said, how is everything? The daughter said, oh, everything's really great. Uh, but there's one thing I would really like. I would re really like it if it would rain. So our plants would have water. And so then he said, okay, well, hopefully it will rain. So he goes up to the other daughter, he said, uh, who, uh, who's married to the tile maker, and, and he said, so hi, how's everything going with you? And she said, oh, everything's really going well. The only thing I really wish for is this dry weather would keep up and our bricks could dry out. And uh, so he's like, well, I guess... I hope for dry weather uh, he didn't know who he was going to join wishes with because he just I guess you can't please everyone and that proves it okay so that's my advice all right thanks bye hey kids you like books how about the Shade Riders and the Dreadful Ghosts. The Shade Riders and the Electric Werewolves. Entangled Adjustment. 
This is a prologue of the Shade Riders. Smash Up! It's another prologue of the Sh Shade Riders. And Bogart Chaos, another prologue of the Shade Riders. All from Amazon or Smashwords.